Hey, what's going on guys? So now that Reaper of Souls is released, I plan to start putting out a video just about every day if I can. I know I was a little sporadic with my videos here recently, but now that the expansion is out, I want to try to get one out just about every day with new builds and, and all kinds of stuff like that. So today, um, I've got this a few different things that I want to talk about and showcase with this particular build. We're running a pylon build, very similar to the build that I posted a couple, a couple weeks ago, maybe a week ago, I can't remember exactly how long it's been, uh, from level 60. And in that video, I said that uh, as soon as the expansion dropped, we would switch Wall of Zombies Wrecking Crew to Paranado, which we have. I mean, this pulls everything in, uh, makes a nice little, nice little neat area of monsters for you to then drop a uh, pile on on top of. So that's pretty much as far as the spec goes. It's really the only thing that's changed for the most part. Uh, in that video, I believe that I was running Vengeful Spirit. In this video, I'm running Horrify Stalker for speed. And also because they're going to be running a Rochelle's Ring of Larceny that gives you a 55% increased movement speed bonus for five for four seconds every time you fear something. Then we're also running the Ticklandian Visage, which just has tons of synergy with the build in general. So you pull everything in with Piranhas, and then you horrify everything, and basically stuns it. It it fears it and roots it in place. Then you can then drop your pylon on top of all that stuff. So pylon is one of those abilities that it's you you got to really build around it to make it viable because it's so easy to miss with it that uh, you really got to make sure that your build and the gear you're using is catered towards it. But if you can maximize it, it does a ridiculous amount of damage. Um, and then also, obviously, we're going to be fearing a lot with Horrify uh, for the movement speed, but then this way we're not sending stuff in just all kinds of different directions. You know, with the Horrify, they'll stay in place so that, uh, you know, we don't make things go too crazy while we're trying to play. This is mostly a solo build, just because the majority of players, until they get more of the speed items, won't be able to keep up with you. Um, I mean, which are, uh, Demon Hunters, you know, can, are pretty fast in general, probably keep up with you just fine. But until some other players get some of the, the speed pieces, I, I think this is more of a solo build currently. Um, but, I mean, depends on the players. You know, some people may be able to, but the, you know, if you're just doing pickup groups, this isn't the build for that. Um, so, as far as the rest of the gear goes, something else I wanted to talk about a little bit is a lot of people are still hung up on sheet DPS, their sheet damage, which in my build, my sheet damage is very average. Uh, 650k, which is actually a little bit buffed from the Enchantress, isn't very high. But, you factor in some other things, you realize how much damage I can actually put out. So 15% extra zombie charger damage here, 12% uh, extra zombie charger damage here, which pile on as a zombie charger rune. And then 18% extra physical damage here, uh, which pylon is physical damage. So there's a bunch of damage there that you do not see factored into the sheet. And then on top of that, we're running the Harrington Waste Guard. Opening a chest grants 121% increased damage for 10 seconds, which is a huge amount of, of damage increase. Now, obviously, my unbuffed damage does not show that because it's a buff that happens. Um, but when I get fully buffed up in this build, when I get you know four or five stacks of Gruesome Feast, and I get this buff my pylons hitting for uh, anywhere from 20 to 30 million or critting for anywhere from 20 to 30 million which is pretty crazy just self buffed and I'm not even running pierce the veil or soul harvest which are two other abilities I could run for extra uh, extra buffing um, so in a party I would assume you know 40 million crits wouldn't be out of the realm of possibility it'd probably be pretty easy to pull off really That's something I'm going to test in a party soon because you get a lot of buffs from other other classes as well. Um, so that's pretty much the gist of it. We're going to do some Torment 1 farming. I can go up to like Torment 3 already with this build and kill things pretty quickly. The issue with that is my toughness isn't very high yet, so I tend to die to certain things. But Torment 2 is is just fine, simply because things die fast enough and you can CC so well between the Horrify and the Ticklandian Visage and uh, Paranado. So let's go ahead and jump into it real quick. We'll do a couple bounties or something just to showcase exactly what's going on with it. Go to the Halls of Agony here. So like any kind of clickable object will proc that waste guard. So uh, weapon racks, armor racks, um, dead bodies, chests, so like this weapon rack, this torture tool, just proc it. Bookcases will proc it, things like that. So there's a 21 million crit right there. So as you can see, like everything gets pulled in and then feared. And then with Grave Injustice, I mean, everything's off cooldown. You know, pretty often. 
Right, so here's a pack. Let's go ahead and proc. Slam dance. So I'm pretty sure they were health link. <laughs> I think they just got one shotted. <laughs> it was only a seven million crits. So it had to have been health link. Again, this is tournament one we're on currently. Got a goblin here. Now goblins you cannot fear, but you can pull them in a tornado. Pick that stuff up. Alright, so we got a torture tool right here. So again, everything is feared and rooted in place currently. A couple 19 million crits. And like I said, that's that's with no gruesome feast. So when you get gruesome feast stacked up, you know it's pretty it's pretty easy to to get this going. So then, like as far as I'll show you exactly how how the ring works here in just a minute, how fast you can get up to as far as speed. So we've got the with the burst in speed right now. It's pretty quick. I mean, between between jaunt and that, you can move around the map awfully fast. And it's off cooldown pretty often. Something that I'd actually think about running in this build would be uh, extra cooldown reduction. Potentially, if I had a Ticklandian Visage with say uh, a socket in it, I would I'd probably rock a diamond for extra cooldown reduction to get your you want your piranhas and your your horrify off a of cooldown as much as possible with this. So, like, more than likely, what I would do if we were doing this bounty for real is uh, most of these white mobs. I mean, I'd kill some of them as we're going, but I'd probably just just honestly run past through the majority of them to get to the bounty and get it done quicker. Get to elite and champion packs. Get to purple mobs. Get to chests and things like that. Things that have the higher chance to drop legendaries. That's really what I'm looking for at the moment. Now, obviously, you can you can stop and kill everything if you really want to, but I wouldn't worry too much about it. All right, so we got a pack here. Let's see if they've got. Try to see if there's something I could uh, click on to get the buff. Most of the time, if you're looking for something, you could find it to get that buff. Every once in a while, you won't be able to. That pack was a little a little sketchy, but that's what you have Spirit Barrage for. You know, there's times where you're going to have to kind of stand back a little bit just to be on the safe side with stuff like Frozen and stuff like that. But Most of the time, most packs, you'll be able to just kill while they're stunned, pretty much. So yeah, that's pretty much the gist of it. Like I said, pretty bad gear at the moment. I've, I've maybe gotten like five upgrades since Loot 2.0, or excuse me, uh, since the expansion dropped. So the majority of my gear is still from Loot 2.0, uh, just been rerolled by the Mystic. Everything else is pretty much, you know, just, uh, uh, you know, just old gear. Um, so there's like a couple legacy pieces in Loot 2.0 stuff. So. You know, with, say, three or four more upgrades, I could see me critting well over 30 million pretty frequently, uh, just self-buffed. Uh, and like I said in the group, over 40 million. So, there it is, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you find some of these pieces, especially the Harrington Waste Guard. That thing is extremely powerful. I think it can rival the new Witching Hour. Um, obviously, the, the new Witching Hour is going to be a, a overall, like, static increase in DPS. But if you're farming areas with high numbers of corpses and, and chests and things like that, the Harrington Waste Guard is going to outperform the Witching Hour, in my opinion. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed it, guys, and I'll see you next time.